Okay, this is a thermodynamics problem, but uh, it is about energy transfer, so you could run into a similar problem in a physics class as well. So here they want us to determine the power required uh, for a car to go up this hill, and they're going to give us three different scenarios based on what we should determine this power. Many times in physics class we use the letter P for power, but uh, here in thermodynamics we use P for pressure. So we like to use W with a dot over it, which basically means a time derivative, because uh, we know the formula for power is work over time. So, so to start out, we're going to start with our one of our most important formulas, the energy balance formula. And we can write it up. The delta of the energy of the system is equal to the transfer of energy, energy that comes in minus the energy that goes out of the system. We can go ahead and further break this down and we can break up the energy of the system into internal energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, and this side of the equation we can break it down to delta of heat, Q stands for heat transfer, so the delta of heat transfer, delta of work, and mass energy. Now in our situation, let's take a look at what do we have. Well, right off the bat we can tell the core is moving, so we're going to be dealing with uh, kinetic energy. It's going up a hill, so we're going to be dealing with potential energy. Uh, to go up a hill, it's definitely going to have to put in some work. So we're going to be dealing with work. Now the internal energy of the system is not going to change, so we can cross this one out. Do we have any heat transfer? No, we don't, so we can cross this one out. And we don't have any mass energy transfer either. Okay, and let's break this equation down a little bit further. Our change in kinetic energy, we can write it as kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. So E0 is my initial, and where you don't see a subscript, that's the final. Potential energy, the same way. Final minus initial, and it's equal to the delta of work. On this side, we don't have initial and final, we have in and out. So, work in minus work out. Now we can finally start worrying about the rest of the details of this problem. In part A, they are asking us for the car to go up the hill with constant velocity. In uh, part B, they are asking us to start with an initial velocity of 0 and end with 30 meters per second. And in the final part, they want us the vehicle to start with a 35 meters per second velocity and end with 5 meters per second velocity. Now let's see how we're going to use our energy balance and energy transfer in order to achieve these goals. Now we're going to take this equation that we wrote up here and break it down even further. Kinetic energy, we can break it down, the formula for it, 1 half times mass times velocity squared. Initial kinetic energy plus final uh, sorry here, final potential energy minus initial potential energy, mgh, equals uh, work in minus work out. First we need to decide which one we have. Now, let's take a look what's happening with the car. Does the car give a work in or, get a, or give a work out? Well, in order for the vehicle to move anywhere, it needs to receive energy from somewhere, right? So, well, you could think of it as uh, the fuel gives this work to the vehicle. So, this will be a work in. 
the car will receive some work or will get some work done on it in order to go up on the hill. It can do it by itself. So it needs this work done on him by the fuel, by the engine. Okay, now, kinetic energy. We have constant velocity. That means that whatever velocity we started with and whatever velocity we end with will be the same. Therefore, the kinetic energy does not change. So, whatever this is equals to this. So these two terms will fall out, will be basically cancelling each other, so it's zero. Now let's take a look at a potential energy. Well, we're going to consider this level to be, let's say, zero, and then it's going to go up a hundred meters length on this slope. So, initial potential energy will be zero because our height is zero and equals work in. A little tip, uh, if you cannot make up your mind whether this is work in or work out, then pick the positive one, which is work in. And on the end, when you're gonna get your answer, if the answer is positive, that means you guessed right. If it's negative, it's telling you that you guessed wrong. Then it was the other one. Okay, let's move on. Work in equals mgh. That's all we have left. This is our new formula. Let's go ahead and calculate our work in. Mass of the car is given 1150 kilograms. Gravity 9.81 meter per second square. Now h. Our h is calculated from this right triangle that we have right here. We know that this is a 30 degree angle. And if we drop a straight line down here, it's going to make us a nice 30, uh, 90 degree right angle. So, from this one, right here, we know that the hypotenuse is 100, degree is 30, we are looking for x. x equals 100 times sine 30. x will be, for us, 50 meters. So, our height that the car will be lifted is 50 meters, so we can go ahead and write this in here, there you go, and then from now on we can go ahead and calculate it, which is gonna give us uh, first in kilograms, meter square, second square, but this one is actually joules, and we can convert it to kilojoules, so 564 kilojoules. But remember, this is not what they are asking, they are asking us the power we found the work so let's go back to our starting formula and plug in here it is power equals work 564 kilojoules divided by time which was given they want us to do this climb in 12 seconds plug it in and there you go the work uh, the power will be 47 0 kilowatts. Now, for part B and part C, we are gonna use the same formula that we set up over here. We're gonna use it for B and for C. So let's start with B. We're gonna write it up. There it is. All the kinetic, potential, and the work that it is we're gonna be working with. Now let's take what can we let's see what can we uh, cancel out. Kinetic energy. Well, the car starts from a zero velocity, so that means there's no initial kinetic energy. So we can cross this term out. Final velocity is 30, so we will have final kinetic energy. Potential energy. Initial it starts from point zero, so we can cross out the initial again but final we will have, so we leave it. Work, again, it's gonna be a work in, so we can cross out the work out. I guess I could have crossed this one out to over here. Work out, we can cross it out. And here it is, I plugged in the formulas for each energy, kinetic energy, half mv squared, plus potential energy mgh, equals the work in. 
Let's plug in our values and see what do we get. Everything is given, the mass, the velocity. Be careful, this is the final velocity. And the MGH, our potential energy, is actually the same thing that we calculated here. The potential energy from this. So you don't have to plug in again, just use the value that you got here. Plug in everything and we can find our work in is 1081.5 kilojoules. Again, this is just the work, we need the power. Let's go back right here. We plug it in over 12 seconds, it's gonna give us a 90.1 kilowatt. Now for the final uh, part of the problem, again, the same equation that we use for all three scenarios. Let's take a look what can we cancel in here. We're gonna start with 35 velocity and end with 5. So that means we will have initial and final uh, ener kinetic energies. Uh, potential energy, again, initial will be 0. We can cross it out. Uh, potential energy, uh, final, we will have some. Well, here again we don't know let's say we i don't know which one's gonna be is it work in or work out so i'm gonna assume that it is work in since that's the positive one so i'm gonna go ahead and cross out the work out if we are wrong like i said we're just gonna get a negative answer which will show us that hey your initial uh, guess is not correct okay let's go ahead and plug in uh, the formulas for each energy kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial v final v initial plus mgh again remember that this is our final potential same from here equals work in here we can actually factor out one half and uh, the mass make it a little bit simpler easier for the eyes plug in all our values for work in from here we're gonna get a negative 690 joules plus our potential that we had here 564 and this will lead us to minus 126 kilojoules so this is weird because we uh, assumed work in but uh, we actually got a negative value so what does this mean this means that uh, our we did not need any work put in from the engine or from the fuel basically the car was able to achieve this uh, goal without any work put into it to go up to this ramp and achieve this uh, time in uh, 12 seconds now why is it minus 126 well they told us that we need to disregard friction drag and rolling resistance so this what it is is basically the driver applying the brakes so something is doing work on uh, the vehicle to uh, reduce its speed so if we wouldn't have uh, somebody braking our final velocity would have been more than five so in order to be five somebody had to break and do some work to uh negative 126 kilojoules exactly in order to achieve this setup now again we only have this as our work our power work over time negative 10.5 kilowatts.